What is up guys, Andy Forrest Team Runner here and today we're talking all about the Nike Vomero 15 after 100 miles. So welcome back to another video and today we're going to be going through the Nike Vomero 15 after 100 miles. We're going to talk about the usual stuff, the wear and tear, how I've been using it and of course the main question, will I be using this shoe moving forward? I'm super excited to share my thoughts on this shoe because actually to be fair it's done rather well and we're going to be going through all of that. Amongst that, two quick announcements. Number one, if you haven't already and you're keen to try and get a pre-order of some of the merch, Order shut on Sunday. If you haven't watched the video, go check that out to make sure you put your order in before then so that we can get you some awesome merch. And secondly, we have the Hoka Only Only Mac 4 in for review. Yes, this turned up today, so this is going to be the next video on the channel. Can't wait to get you guys my first impressions of this bad boy. Anyway, not enough about this and more about this. If you're excited for today's video, guys, make sure you give it a like, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel for weekly running content, and then we'll kick start with the wear and tear. So let's start with the wear and tear. After 100 miles, I say this every single time, you really don't want to be seeing anything major going on in the shoe, maybe a tiny bit of wear on the outsole, but really that's about it, no snags or anything like that. And I can confirm, once again, with Nike stuff, they just seem to be built like tanks, and this shoe is absolutely no exception. You have to excuse the mud, because it's been a bit muddy lately, but on the whole, everything is looking in really good condition. In terms of the fact that we've got 100 decent solid miles in this shoe over a variety of terrain, predominantly concrete asphalt, but there has been some dry trails and some muddier trails on there. Obviously, don't get me wrong, this isn't a trail shoe, but for those of you who know and you see my videos of training, you know that I live with fire track roads around here, fire track trails, I should say. Very runnable, all my road shoes go out there, and this has been no exception. And to be fair, the outsole grip has held up really well and it actually does quite a good job. In fact, actually, this isn't far off what my Peg 36 trail lugs were like. They were probably like another couple of mil deeper, but on the whole, the outsole is wearing really, really nicely. There is tiny tiny wear in and around here on a few of the lugs that the groove pattern in some of them has worn off but that's literally it so in terms of the wear and tear it's just holding up solidly but more interestingly how have I been using this shoe since the initial set of reviews until the 100 mile point well it's been 99% easy and moderate running in fact actually barely any moderate running easy running I'm pretty confident I said that after testing this shoe easy and moderate was about as much as this shoe would handle I did a couple more moderate runs in this thing but on the whole the rest has just been soaking up the easy mileage and I have to be honest with you I have actually really quite enjoyed going to this shoe it's not been a labor for me to pick this thing up put it on and think oh I've got to get it to 100 miles I've actually really enjoyed it and week in week out in my marathon training rotation with some of the shoes I've just found some shoes that have just stuck like glue to my feet and this is got this is one of them to be honest with you this is one of them and that's quite surprising considering my stance on some of Nike's more daily trainers they are quite heavy and the big difference to me in this despite this being slightly heavier than the peg 37 is just the midsole it's just a really comfy cushion midsole I really enjoy it and it has done me really well for those easy days I've taken this thing out on my Fridays mainly and that seems to be the connecting the dots run that I do in between my sessions and the long run I just go out there forget about about pace forget about time plod along and this thing just soaks them up really really comfortably I have to say the airbag in this thing is such a big improvement for me personally on the peg 37 and the cushioning around it is just super soft much better than react and I'm kind of looking at this going I wish you'd use this cushioning in more of your daily trainings because it would just make things so much more enjoyable I still stand by the fact that when I saw this thing and I compared this to the peg 37 that this for me is kind of what I would love to see the peg line be with this foam and then the peg be more streamlined and it'll be a little bit more efficient because they're both very similar shoes the main difference is pretty much the midsole their weight is almost identical uh, although the, the the look and the feel in terms of aesthetically they look different in terms of feeling they're relatively similar I can't really tell that much of a difference bar the extra cushioning that goes on in and around here is just a little bit more plush 
and this super hard plastic uh, cup that sits around the heel. Other than that, I do think this is where the peg should be, a very much comfortable daily trainer, because for me, this has ticked all the boxes that the peg never did. Um, anyway, that's a sidetrack. I have to say, going back to the original point, Easy Runs has been how I've used it. This would also be perfect for those longer easy runs as well. Sadly, I haven't done longer easy runs in the plan that I'm doing. Every long run I'm doing at the moment is some kind of workout. Otherwise, I'd be using them, I think, in that as well. So yeah, been holding up really, really solid. So that then leads me on to, will I be using this thing moving forwards? Uh, I probably will be using this thing moving forwards. Right now, I have to shelve it because I've got the Adidas Solar Boost 3, which I now need to start putting some miles in. And as you've just seen, we've got the Hoka Oni Oni Mac 4 that's just come in. So those are gonna be slotted into the rotation, doing various testing over the next couple of weeks. But depending on how well I get on with the Adidas shoe, and depending on how well I get on with the Mac 4, and some of the other shoes, this will probably start to creep back in and soak back up some of the easy miles. For the first 11, 12 weeks of this marathon training block, this thing has been a real go-to for my easy day shoe. And I've gotta be honest with you, I've got grown quite an attachment to it. It. As I said, and I stand by the fact in my first impressions, this is good without being outstanding. Exactly the same as the Solar Boost 3. You just get those shoes that you pay the price, full price for, and you're happy. You know, you feel like you've got your money's worth, but it's not blown you out of the water. And that's exactly what this thing does. It just gets the job done. I'm happy with it, I'm pleased, and I've grown a little bit of an attachment to it, which is really weird, because I know that other people, and I've watched other reviews on the Vimera 15 from other reviewers, and not everyone's keen on it, which just goes to show it just works for some people and others. We all have different opinions, and for me, it just, it's working, which is great. So yeah, I think I'm gonna be using this moving forwards, although just right now, it's gonna be sidelined for me to get a few more miles into some of the other shoes. So there we go, that concludes my video, 100 mile update on the Vomero 15. A surprisingly enjoyable shoe, I have to be honest with you. And talking of enjoyable shoes, I'm super excited, as I said in the intro, to be getting into this thing. Just walking around the house in it right now, I have to say, Say it feels so so good so hopefully that will be another enjoyable shoe but as I said earlier you know my kind of relationship with these Nike shoes I'm delighted that I've finally grown a bit of a bond to one of their shoes it just it works for me I let me know in the comments below if it works for you because I'd love to get that discussion going I know some of you said you've been Vomero fans for a while you've got the 14 you loved it you've got the 15 and you sent it back. That's been quite a common theme, just too heavy, too clunky. I understand it's not for everyone. You have to remember, it's great to hear your voices because I'm jumping into the Vomero at the 15 iteration. I haven't tried any of the other ones, so I've got nothing to compare to, just like I jumped into the Pegasus at the 37 and had none of the previous versions to compare to. So yeah, let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are, if you've got your hands on the Vomero, and what you're excited to see coming up in 2020, what you're excited to test. If you missed some video on my hit list, I've got things like the Mac 4, which we now have, which is amazing, the Evo Ride, the Rebel 2, the Next% Percent 2, which had that limited release drop recently, hopefully later in March, we'll see a mass drop to some more selected areas. That's the rumor I've been hearing and some other awesome shoes that are gonna be coming out. The Brooks launch free that my friend Tim Gross has reviewed. He's messaged me a few times about that saying that's a really, un a really good shoe. Lots of positive glowing reviews about that going around. So let me know in the comments below what you're super excited about for this spring. It'd be great to hear from you. Let's get that discussion going. Anyway, that's enough from me. I hope you enjoyed this update of the Vimera 15. Stay tuned, subscribe for the next video, which of course will be my first impressions on the Mac 4, and stick around for the weekend where we've got the Half Marathon TT. If you enjoyed today's video, guys, please give it a like, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel for weekly running content, and as always, I'll see you in the next one. Until then.